Welcome to video three for the kinematics unit notes. In the last video, when we were talking about constant acceleration, we uh, I mentioned that the area underlined on the velocity versus time graph equals displacement. So let's take that a little a little further. Let's let's take a look at this. So I've got a velocity versus time graph, and let's say I have a line on this graph like so. So let's say I have a nice constant acceleration. I want to find the area under this line. And let's say I want to find the area between this point and this point down here. So I want to find the area of all of this stuff right here. Well, this is a triangle. So the area for a triangle is one half base times height. So, taking a look at the, the base here, here I have time, and let's say here I have t, not my initial time. Down here, I'm going to have my initial velocity, v naught, and up here, I'll just go all the way up here, I have my final velocity, v. So when I look at the area underneath this, I would have one half. Now my base is going to be t minus t naught, and my height is going to be v minus v naught. So the area under this equals one half delta t times delta v. And what this gives me then instead of area, you know, this gives me the displacement by delta x. And we can do some uh, we can do some things with this. So remember that acceleration was delta v divided by delta t. So what I'm going to do is um, I am going to get rid of the v. Uh, notice that delta v equals acceleration multiplied by delta t. So when I substitute that in up here, I see that delta x equals one half a delta t squared. So that's a one handy little trick. Um, if I wanted to, I could also get rid of the delta t, and it would give me, uh, looks like, delta v squared divided by 2a. So that's another thing I could have done if I wanted to. But that's kind of important. That's a quadratic relationship. So if I take that formula, If I use it, I can now make a, a, a graph of a displacement versus time. And I can see what acceleration looks like on a displacement versus time graph. So this is displacement, time. Now, looking at this, this really looks like a quadratic formula. You know, um, y equals some constant times x squared. So that means then that this right here would be a slope, or not slope, uh, a curve. So on a displacement versus time graph, acceleration is a curve. Uh, we previously talked about instantaneous velocity. Well, I could also have instantaneous acceleration. So if I have a velocity versus time graph, and let's say that, you know, it's a curve. Well, remember that on a velocity versus time graph, slope means acceleration. So here, I have a negative acceleration. Down here, where the slope equals zero, I have zero acceleration. Now, Remember, that doesn't mean the object has stopped. It just means that it has stopped accelerating. It, its velocity is no longer changing. It has a constant velocity. So here I can think about the acceleration 
decreasing, so uh, it's still getting faster, but it's getting faster at a slower rate. Here, it has stopped getting faster at all. And here, where the slope is positive, here, it's, it's like a vehicle, vehicle slowing down. So what we can think about, um, or I'm sorry, not slowing down, a positive acceleration, speeding up. So we can think about, you know, someone in stop and go traffic. At the first part, you know, they see a car up ahead, so they're just letting off the gas, letting the car coast down. Here, they're maintaining a constant speed, and then traffic's, traffic is cleared up, so here they can push the accelerator and get a little bit faster. Uh, generally, on a velocity versus time graph, um, well, for these, uh, you know, I'll, I'll come back to that thought later. Uh, basically, for these, once again, we can uh, say that the slope of a tangent line is the acceleration. at that instant of time. So that means once again we can use some uh, calculus. So acceleration equals the limit as time approaches some number of delta V over delta T. So in other words acceleration equals dV over dT if we want to use calculus. Okay, I'm going to do some more calculus here. Uh, this isn't anything you have to memorize, but this is something that's going to lead us to more kinematics equations. So, since uh, acceleration is dV over dt, I can use some cross-multiplying. And now I'm going to use something called the integral. And again, this is something you'll learn later in calculus if you're taking it. So I'm going to integrate this from the initial velocity to the final velocity, integrate that from zero to a time. And when you take this, uh, the integral of dv, it's just going to be v minus v naught. And then here, uh, it's just going to be a times t. So this formula here should look very familiar to you because that is something I've, I've shown you before. But wait, there's more. Velocity is dx over dt. And I see that I have a velocity right here. So what I can do is I can do a substitution. Now I have dx over dt equals initial velocity plus at. I can cross multiply again. Notice I distributed, and I can integrate. So this one, I'm going to integrate this one from the initial exposition to the final exposition. This one, I'm going to integrate it from 0 to t, and then 0 to t. So the integral of dx with those conditions would be x minus x naught. The integral of v naught dt is just going to be v naught t. Now this one is a little trickier. at dt. Well, this is actually going to be one half at squared. And when you take calculus, you learn all these rules. And honestly, they are not difficult at all. So, this is a formula I want you to know. This is a very, 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 very important formula that we will be using over and over and over again. And you'll notice that it looks very similar to what we have written at the top of this page. Um, but uh, it's a little more complete now. So this is a model for motion. And it is a model that is always true. Something that we will always be using. Okay, so uh, 
The next graph I want to look at is the acceleration versus time graph. So let's think about slope and area now. At this point, slope right here, the units for slope would be area over time. So it would be meters per second squared per second. That's meters per second cubed. Um, that's no meaning. So on an acceleration versus time graph, slope has no meaning. Kind of like how area had no meaning on a velocity. I'm sorry, area had no meaning on a position versus time graph. However, if I take a look at the area, the units for the area would be meters per second squared times second, which equals meters per second. So here, the area represents a change in velocity. Now remember, it doesn't mean velocity, it means a change in velocity. Just like on the velocity versus time graph, how area represented displacement. You know, that's a change in position. All right. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is average velocity. Um, so let's say that I have a velocity versus time graph. And let's say I have a nice constant acceleration. So I have a couple points on here. Let's say I have uh, an initial point. I'll call this my V naught. And then up here, I have a final position V. First off, I can find the average velocity. I can add together those two velocities, divide by two. So that can give me a nice way of finding average velocity. Um, and, you know, this path can do some pretty weird things if it wanted to. You know, that, that average would still be the same. Uh, it might not be very accurate, but I can still find that average. Another way to find average velocity is displacement over time. So that's something, you know, I'm, I showed you this formula at the beginning of these notes, uh, but I wasn't being completely truthful. That is also an average velocity. Well, I can set these two things equal to each other. And I can solve it for delta x, you know, our position. And that gives me a nice way to find position between two things, or between one, an object that is accelerating between two velocities. And what's nice about this one is I don't need to have a value for the acceleration. All I need to know is that the acceleration is constant. Okay, now um, we can use these equations and derive another one. Um, here's what we're, what we're down to we have two types of motion. Constant velocity. When you have constant velocity, we have one formula that we, ha that we can use. That's it. That is the only model we can use when we have constant velocity. Constant acceleration is different. When we have constant acceleration, uh, remember that acceleration is delta, uh, sorry, delta V, not delta X. So that means that we can have uh, V equals V naught plus AT. Um, another one we saw And then the one we just derived and then there's another one using some algebra um, I'm not going to work out the derivation of this one for you um, if you really want to know come and see me and I can help you out but these are four models that we can use when we're 
under constant acceleration. So that right there is basically kinematics, those five equations, and then the understanding of motion graphs, and then the understanding of the difference between constant velocity and constant acceleration. Honestly, that is it. So this concludes our video for uh, this part of the notes.